Hello ladies and gentlemen, Adrian here for digitaldojos.com and today we're going to be talking about some OS X productivity tips. I want to start by giving a huge thanks to Matthias over at Eternal Storm Software. He's the indie developer behind a great suite of Mac OS X and iOS apps like Yoink and ScreenFloat. Uh, so be sure to head over to his site because he's making all the content this week possible over at Digital Dojos. Again, over at eternalstorms.at. All right, so you want to be productive on your Mac. Maybe you're a new Mac OS X user. Maybe you've been using OS X for quite some time and you just want to you know, get a refresher course or see how somebody else does it because these are my own personal workflow tips within OS X, especially recently because I've been working strictly off of MacBook Air, which limits my screen size and resolution, stuff of that nature. So I've really had to adapt how I work on OS X every day. So let's jump right into it. Number one, first and foremost, and this is a very personal one. Some people can work in the chaos, but for me, I like to have a clean desktop. It's just the way I like things. Uh, but from time to time, and in reality, all this what you see now is an illusion because my desktop actually looks something like this. Uh, and this is typically how it gets after I've been working on a couple of videos or doing some client work. Screenshots are all over the place because that's where they go by default. So something as simple as, you know, of course, taking advantage of the right click menu to hit clean up when they're all over the place and they're layered over each other. Uh, you can hit clean up by name, kind, data modified. That really helps you to get the kind of the bigger size files off your desktop or just sorting them by a specific way. Um, but a really cool tip that I picked up a while back is just making a simple folder, call it junk, call it cleanup, what have you. And then when, when it's really overloaded, you just kind of take everything that's there and then just drag it into your cleanup folder and then sort that out at the end of the week, sort that at the end of the month, however you want to deal with it, put the files in their proper place, delete the files that you aren't using. Something as simple as that is a really big tip and it just really minimizes what you see in the clutter that's on your actual desktop. But again, if you can work in the chaos, then more power to you. Number two, distraction-free full screen mode. So OS X has a uh, full screen feature that's supported by, for the most part, most apps, but now and again, you'll get an app that doesn't support it. Uh, and all this is, is essentially it makes your app full screen, as you can see here. So you can go into Safari window, hit that green arrows to expand it into full screen mode. And if you need your menu bar, just hover to the top, you need your dock, hover to the bottom here. I really like this when I'm writing or doing a specific project, because as great as multitasking is, as great as having multiple monitors is, we tend, uh, you know, scientifically to focus better with one thing in front of us, one thing, you know, not even like the desktop wallpaper or video playing in the background, what have you, you know, just having that one thing first and foremost allows us to easily focus on whatever it is we need to do. And, you know, in a distraction free environment, I think the best way to do that is going completely full screen mode. All right, while we're on that subject, that leads us to number three, learning your gestures here. So learning your gestures, for example, or learning the features that you can take advantage of. For example, within full screen mode, you can do kind of a split app view, as you saw there. So you can have like a word processor on the right, Safari on the left, in the full screen mode. So you get the most screen re uh, resolution, but you also have the ability to kind of see one thing on the left, because at times there is, you know, moments where we need to multitask, whether we're referencing something that we're typing or taking notes off of something. Uh, but beyond that, if I'm in full screen, I can swipe with four fingers here between apps or virtual desktops. Going into system preferences and clicking on your trackpad features if you're on a laptop, for example, just really taking advantage of everything that OSN has offered by default. You know, lo looking at the settings here for your trackpad and adjusting things that you like. More gestures shows you how to access uh, some things that most people who are on the Mac may not even know about. For example, like App Expose or Launchpad. Like these are all features that are built into OS 10 that some users don't even know exist and are really, really useful. Mission control, for example, allows you to get an overview of everything that you have going on here. That's where you can set up virtual desktops, which is really useful if you're limited to a you know singular screen. Again, OSN has so many great features. Of course, learning how to master Finder, Spotlight, so hit Command Space, and that's a universal search to see all of your files on your Mac. But beyond that, it can do things like basic things like math. So you can do 56 times five and automatically get an answer here. I use Spotlight all the time when I'm doing things uh, on the web because it, doesn't, it allows me to do things without having to open up another tab. Uh, just really, really useful. Take advantage of all those built-in features and gestures because uh, it definitely goes a long way. And last but not least, third-party applications. We love them and hopefully, you know, you, you use a lot of them out there supporting the developer community because there are times where OS X just doesn't do the things that we want it to do. Sometimes we want to automate a process or a workflow uh, and, you know, going into the Mac App Store or going online and finding those third-party apps that work best for you 
can just really help out. So for example, our sponsor, Eternal Storms, they're the makers uh, behind a great app called Yoink. So uh, one of his great apps here that allows you to just simply add this kind of drag and drop process to your Mac. So I can drag and drop files that I'm typically working with here into Yoink. And then when I'm on a full screen app like Safari, I already have them easily available to me here on the left. No having to jump between desktops here, having to go into Finder and then it takes me out of full screen mode just to navigate and find that file. It can really be cumbersome and something like Yoink, which just puts that little side window here so I can access them whether I'm in Photoshop, Final Cut Pro, it saves me so much time and it's just in this really easy drag and drop interface. So again, that may be different for you. Your workflow, of course, differs from mine. So going out and finding those apps that work best for you really make the Mac your own. So I hope these tips help some of you out there on Mac OS X. Of course, I'd love to hear your own productivity tips. Leave them down in the comments below. Uh, recommend apps, what have you. You know, thumbs up if this video helped you. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And as always, for more great content, head over to digitaldojos.com.